Destructo Vlog. Building a Proto Man helmet out of a motorcycle helmet. This video is not really meant to be a DIY how-to as much as it is supposed to be. A supplement to the written guide at DestructoBlog.com, which is called How I Build Proto Man Helmets. Uh, the link will be in the description. Some video is shot from the Mark II version of the helmet, uh, which I made uh, two years ago, and that had green LEDs in the earpieces, and it had a thinner white headpiece made out of Wonderflex. Uh, the video will start with the choice of making the white headpiece out of EVA foam or Wonderflex. Wonderflex is easier, but EVA foam is more permanent. Uh, I will very briefly show you how to do both. The first thing I did was get tracing paper, fold it, then draw my pattern for the white headpiece on Proto Man's helmet. Then I transferred it both to the EVA foam and Wonderflex, cut them out with a razor knife and scissors, then formed them to the correct shape using a heat gun. I did both pieces here because I was originally going to use both methods together, bonding the Wonderflex onto the EVA foam, but later decided to just use the EVA foam. Here they are individually. And if you have chosen to make this out of Wonderflex, all you have to do is heat two layers together and paint, more or less. Whenever you're um, working with Wonderflex and you have to paint it, and this in this case I put you know filler on it and got it all smooth and nice, you're gonna get threads on the back of it. Just that's just the nature of the beast. It's it's made out of nylon fiber and foam, so you're gonna get threads. But wait till you've painted it with something first, so the threads have absorbed a little bit of the paint to make them rigid and then you just get a sharp uh, razor blade out and drag it across and I'll just sort of break off uh, stick around for the painting segment and your Wonderflex piece will be done if you're looking into doing the EVA foam then let's get started with that I guess I need title cards here all right so you got your helmet and you've taken it all apart and stuff gather your fiberglass resin your Bondo a mask for fiberglass sanding, sanding block and sanding paper, shitty $1 brushes, pointy fingers, paper plates, and cheap plastic utensils for mixing. Also grab a Bondo spreader. I uh, use that off camera. Cool flow, Valve. half life 3 confirm. Mmm, Canadian maple. Is that my Homer Simpson? I don't know what that was. Okay, so follow the directions written on the packaging on how uh, to use the hardener, and be careful because it dries fast. When you're mixing it, it'll do it in spoonfuls, and I have a fork. I have a fork. <clears throat> Next, add in some Bondo. Mix to a gooey, runny paste-like substance, kind of like pancake batter, so like, like a 50-50 ratio of Bondo resin, syrup goo, and putty. Uh, my fucking hand is in the way. I'm so white. Mix very well with enough of both hardeners. It should be thin enough to brush on easily, but not so runny that it doesn't adhere. Time lapse B! Use your cheapy brushes to make an even coat on all sides of the piece that you can reach while it's still on the helmet. This will solidify the EVA foam so it will hold this shape forever. Be careful of drippy drippy drop drops. Work fast, this stuff will start to generate heat and then so it will dry itself in just a few minutes. It'll usually get uh, getting like kind of sloshy and sticky. At that point, you're gonna wanna wipe your brush. Otherwise your brush is gonna harden and it's gonna become like a stabby tool for stabbing. Okay, here's coat number two. This time I got a lot thicker. You may wanna add more Bondo putty this time around. Okay, once that's dry, coat three. Use three quarter putty to resin this time for a super thick hard coat. Remove your tape and fill in all your areas as well as you can. Redneck snack bird. Gesticulation. Here I'm mocking up where the visor will eventually be while the headpiece is still drying. I will cut up the visor and adhere it to the inside with Velcro. I've also marked where I'm going to cut out the mouthpiece, but I don't have footage of me cutting it out. Once the headpiece is hardened, you can now remove it and apply another 50-50 concoction of resin and filler to the back. I laid it on thick this time because it won't be seen and who cares, but don't get too crazy or it won't fit back onto the mask. You'll have to sand it a lot if you add too much in the areas where it makes contact, and it's a real pain to do if you don't have a Dremel round sanding wheel. An incredibly important step I didn't film. Okay, so later on I changed the headpiece uh, because it wasn't strong enough after this. It fell and it cracked and it was not a good time. Okay, so with that piece broken, what I did was apply a coat of short strand fiberglass to each side, 
sand it, and then apply a coat of Bondo over top of it. Okay, now that that's basically out of the way, we're cutting stuff. I've already marked where I want my cuts to be, and using a Dremel and the fiber cutoff wheel, I have made some cuts. I cut out the mouthpiece and the inner lip for the visor. Here I'm demonstrating how you have to make several passes instead of just cutting it all off in one go. You have to let the disc cool and go easy. If it gets too hot and gums up with plastic, it's going to explode all over your face. Uh, you probably want to wear long sleeves and goggles while you're doing this, otherwise it's going to be flicking hot, molten, rubber, plastic stuff into your eyes and it's not fun. Now that your primary cuts have been made, let's go over how uh, we use short strand fiberglass, or short strange fiberglass, I'm an idiot, to fill in the holes. First tape up your holes from the inside. This will keep your filler from globbly gloobly wowies out poopy all over the place. I've sanded each hole and the surrounding area with rough sandpaper so it adheres. Here I've mixed a little regular Bondo putty because my glass is a bit old and it has thickened. Uh, use a spreader to plop the stuff in the holes, and while you're doing this, you may want to cover up any extra rough cuts or scratches that you made by accident. Off camera, I have made more aggressive cuts around the visor area to make the helmet sharper and sanded off the paint. Uh, the next part is a bigger deal. Before you fill in the large area where the visor hinge is, score the area with the Dremel pretty deep, then sand it with very rough sandpaper. Fill in with short strand fiberglass. After that's dry, you'll want to sand that and then put Bondo putty over top of that. Okay, so here's the visor. I have taped off the area around where I want to make my cuts to protect it from scratches. Off camera, I cut everything out just like I did on the helmet itself, including the back parts of the hinge assembly as I stick out too far. Whenever you try to fit this thing inside the helmet, it's just too wide. After that, you're going to want to sand the edges to make them smooth so you don't cut your face when you put it on later. Ear pieces. This is a plastic drain stopper from a plumbing section of Walmart and a 3 to 4 inch PVC coupler from Home Depot. I explain. Here's the inside ear piece for the Proto Man helmet. Um, we're going to cut the center out and leave these dots exposed. And uh, what I have to do that is this would normally go to something closer to like a one and a half inch, but I don't have one. The one and a quarter is the biggest one I have. If it needs to be bigger, uh, for where I put it, I just get the Dremel out and cut it with a cutting wheel. Whenever you're doing stuff like this though, when you're cutting into plastic, you have to be careful to vent your bits and vent your saw blades because they will overheat and they will crack and they will fly into your eyes. So I have goggles that I will wear when I do this. These ear pieces, the outer ear pieces, which I haven't cut yet, these are made out of PVC. You don't want to breathe in PVC. It's pretty nasty. And for that, I'm going to actually use this hacksaw, which I've actually used power tools on trying to do the ear pieces before, and they always melt and they get misshapen. A regular old hacksaw is the best thing I find. Uh, fine tooth is the one that I use there, but I've actually used a wooden saw one time just because it's all I had. That kind of thing. It's is insanely hard to do through a viewfinder. This is uh, before and this is after. Uh, it's stuck her in the vise. Uh, one thing that I will note here is it actually takes a while to get all the way through it. Uh, if you have like a nice clean saw that's meant for cutting PVC, you'll have no problem, but I don't have one of those. So, um, what the biggest thing that I can tell you to make this easier on yourself if you're going to make these out of PVC, mark your measurement about I usually measure mine so I can fit this in here like this. I usually measure a little bit outside. I kind of just make it up as I go, but I measure a little bit outside here. And then if that fits a little too tightly against the, the helmet, I actually trim this inside ring off and then glue from the outside, like in between here. And then on the outside, I've marked it here on my little ruler. Then on the outside, mark it on the outside as well. That way when you're cutting, you can check from the inside and from the outside to see uh, whether or not your cut is wandering because in a vise, I mean, this is round and you're putting it in a vise, so it's going to twist in the vise as you are trying to saw it, and it's going to make your cut crooked. Vise it from this end first because it's going to be harder to saw through this. It's going to flex more and you're probably going to get more teeth marks. So uh, for, you're, you're just going to cut that off and throw it away. So you want to vise that in really hard. So we don't care if that has teeth marks on it, so you can hold that in really, really tight so you can cut through this longer ring, which is harder to cut through. 
and then uh, once this is cut, you can flip it back around. And sometimes I wrap like a towel or something around it, just try to keep teeth off of it, but it might also make it slip. I, I, I have in the past used foam and rubber pads on the inside, but I don't have any of those right now. I've destroyed them all. Small tip. After your cuts are all made, the sanding begins. I usually start really rough, like 400 grit, and work down from there. This takes forever if you do it by hand, but if you do it by hand, you must use a sanding block. Remember to keep checking to ensure your sanding is flat. Also, it's incredibly important to wear a mask while you're sanding PVC, otherwise you breathe it in and you get immediately sick. It's not a good time. The next step for the earpieces is to actually form the outer piece to the contour of the helmet. Essentially what you need to do is to move the piece around to a spot where it will sit relatively where you want it to sit, uh, then mark the spot with a marker marking dead center. Lay tape over your helmet over the side. Apply fiberglass, either short strand or body filler, uh, to the edges of the outer earpiece, then apply that piece to the side of the helmet uh, in the direct center. Use a spreader to smooth it all out and form to the shape of the helmet without much feathering. When this is done, remove the tape and the earpiece. Sand down and test fit. For fitting the earpieces, the same method is used for fitting the headpiece. A babble like a thaco. At this point, you're like, uh, Chris, show me how to paint stuff. And I'm going to be like, no. Uh, because it's hard to film, so I already painted it. I'm gonna wait. Uh, this is Lexan. Uh, peeled off one side of the sticker sheet and sanded it lightly. It sprayed it green, and I dropped it, and it's probably ruined now. Just spray painted them white and cut the centers out. They're actually gonna be mounted like that, and uh, this should be tacky enough that I can touch it. I won't ruin it. So uh, these go in here, like that. And uh, they will be. Uh, it, it, it's not entirely clear after reviewing all the shaky, horrible footage I just shot, uh, the, the, the steps involved. So um, what, what we're going to do is we're going to start with your basic helmet, unpainted, sanded. And then you fill all your holes and your large areas in with short strand fiberglass. And then on top of that, you put your Bondo putty. No fiberglass is in this. This is just your uh, plastic body filler. And then after that's sanded, on top of that, you put your... Uh, plastic adhesion promoter primer and then you do a light scuff of that and then on top of that you use your high build primer. High build primer is going to fill in all your little spots and mistakes and then it'll show you any scratches or any marks that you've missed and you're probably going to need to sand that and then re reprime it multiple times in order to get rid of all your pinholes. You want to get rid of those before you put your paint on because once the paint's on that it's there forever. After that you put your base coat of paint on. You're going to want to put a thin coat of paint and then uh, after that is tacky, you put another thin coat on. And then after that's tacky, you put a little bit thicker third coat on. Uh, if you want to put a clear coat on over top of this, with, with the enamel, you don't need to do that. But if you wanted to put a clear coat over top of this, then you do the same thing. Uh, very thin first coat, medium thin second coat, relatively thick third coat. Um, I, I would honestly, if you wanted a smooth, perfect paint job, I'd wait 24 hours. Um, when you do this, you want to make sure that it's been actually cured and dried. Tw it's 24 hours to 72 hours, depending on the, t on the type of paint. Your actual color coat with uh, really, really thin sandpaper, like maybe 2,500 or 3,000 grit, wet sand it, and then uh, do your clear coat over top of that after that's fully dried. And then you might want to do a, or another uh, a polish on, on top of that uh, final clear coat. Here are the three main parts of the ear. For the LED version of this project, I've simply wired LEDs with resistors in series. I bought LEDs and resistors in a pack from Amazon and wired them to a 5 volt regulator that runs from a 9 volt battery. The battery compartment is usually cut into the foam part of the helmet interior. Okay, let's look at how this fits together. I'll remove the glass so I don't break it none. Uh, this fits in here and these wires get fitted snug down into this groove. After it's all heat shrunk and taped up and glued in place, I'll run wires through holes I drill in each side of the helmet, like this. Okay, here is right after the paint cured. Uh, there are three rivets that hold on a piece of Velcro with glued back on the inside. Uh, this is used to mount the visor. The earpieces will fit here, 
and the headpiece will fit here. These are the finished earpieces without LEDs. I glued it all together with hot glue first, then I further reinforced the outer and inner white pieces with JB Weld. The helmet is full of filler and I'm realizing now that I feathered the bondo a little sloppily. You can see that the paint has cracked slightly because of the helmet flexing. The white headpiece is now done, after I have reinforced the backing with short strand. It's a heavy piece now, and with this shape it would have been difficult for me to sculpt and mold, so I built it entirely in 3D using resin fillers. Now here's where the issues started to happen. When I went to put the interior foam back in the helmet, it no longer fit. It had been out of the helmet for like six months. So what I normally do is heat it up with a hairdryer. But even after this step, it was still too big. So then I had to cut it in half and then it was still would not fit in. So I had to kind of uh, manhandle it and work it in and it ended up damaging the helmet. There is the finished project with the big cracks on the front. I've never had that happen before. I basically filled it in with uh, JB Weld and then painted over top of them to try to correct them out. What I'm doing now is taking a sharpie and marking trace marks to lay down the velcro to attach the white headpiece. I ended up doing it a little bit too close to the edge. The crack on the one side will be hidden, but the one on the other side won't be as much. With the finished product seated, you can't see it from the top angle at least. Final footage I shot of this isn't very good and the audio is bad, but uh, the finished product came out pretty well. Um, it, it has two pieces that cracked uh, while I was reassembling it and uh, that was a huge bummer. Uh, I think to fix this I probably should have actually not mixed in Bondo putty with the short strand fiberglass. I think that's what caused it to crack. Uh, plus, I tried to feather the edges a little bit too far, and it got too thin, and when the helmet flexed, it just cracked and broke. So, um, whenever you're filling in your, your pieces around your visor, you might just want to go ahead and try to get that in a self-contained area and not try to feather it around the edges. That's essentially how I made uh, three different Protoman helmets, and uh, hopefully this will give you some creative ideas to start on your own. Okay, goodbye. Thing we've ever done in our lives. Yeah.